Welcome to Insights of All Trades with Cole and Nick. This is where we talk to people we meet along our journeys through medicine, military service, sports, education, and beyond. We hope you enjoy. All right, Seth Weitzel, welcome to Insights of All Trades. Thank you. Yeah, you just had an album come out like a week or two ago now. Yes, sir. Um, um, the 13th. So it's a little, it's like a week and a half, a little over. Okay. And this is your first full length album, first solo project, uh, you know, that you've like at least released to everyone. So, um, I mean, that's going to be the main focus of the show here. Um, kind of just talking about the album, talking about you know your history how it came to be how you got into music that kind of stuff yeah it sounds good you know if you want to like start wherever you want to go um i think you know we could start with the album maybe and and then like kind of i'm sure through time we'll we'll delve deeper into like you know inspirations and things like that so that sounds good so uh so tell us about say uncle so say uncle that started i think i started recording that in 2018 um and it was a long project and it like i started writing it the end of 2015 a lot of 2016 and then i just kind of sat with it for 2017 um and me and my friend will markley who i recorded with um we're like we should actually do this we should we should put this collection of songs together and uh yeah we started working on it and it was, it felt so big. It was intimidating. Like I remember, uh, I had a week off work and I borrowed my brother's drum kit and we went to Will's studio and started drumming. And it was just so overwhelming. Cause up to that point, I'd only ever just recorded in my bedroom by myself. Um, so is this an actual studio? Like he's got, you know, the right equipment and all that stuff. Or are you still running things through, you know, like garage band running through a PA, that kind of stuff. No, it's a real studio. Okay. He, he built it on his property. It's awesome. He's got like great preamps, great plugins. Um, he's got an engineering room. So yeah. he would like sit in the other room and go set me up to drum and I'd, I'd mess up and I'd hear the click track stop and Will would like poke his head out the door and be like, do that one again. Yeah. So okay. <laughs> it was, it was a much different, um, much different approach than I'd had before. Not quite as relaxed as just sitting in your bedroom trying to record it onto your Mac or something like that. Right. Much different. Yeah. Um, but after I, after I like lost the jitters or whatever of having somebody else involved, it became very relaxed because Will and I are good friends. Mm -hmm. Um, so that it just took a little bit to get used to. Um, but his, his studio is in Thompson town and I was living in Pittsburgh when we started the started the project Mm. so it was like it would be weekends where i could maybe take a friday off and drive home and then we'd be like okay let's uh let's track guitars for three songs this this weekend so it was so much back and forth and it took a really long time to do and now you're doing all the instrumental all the vocals all that stuff basically on your own right I mean, you have Will there helping you out, but you don't have a band here doing like somebody's doing bass, somebody's doing drums. It's all you. Right. It yeah. was all me, except like you said, Will was around. Um, and sometimes it would be like, I'm having trouble with this bass track. Like Will jump on it and he's amazing. So he'd be like, okay, yeah. And just play it better than I could like first time through. Okay. It was annoying, but it was great. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah. Um, and once we realized that we were like, so after all the back and forth from Pittsburgh to Thompson town over, like it turned into like a year or so, then we had this finished project and we're like, well, we don't really know what to do with this now. Um, and that was a big part of the, a big part of the, um, the work I didn't realize was involved. I was like, oh, now I need to find somebody to master this. And I don't even know what, like, I actually don't know what mastering does. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't either. <laughs> it's just like yeah. this I almost feel like it's a scam where they're like just pay us this money and we'll like mess with your tracks a little bit. Yeah, so like my impression is that they just kind of like raise and lower some levels of things and try and just make it sound a little bit tighter, but yeah. Ultimately they just give like they give everything like a even like cohesive feel. Okay. That's the biggest thing that I took from it. So when you submitted your tracks beforehand, 
and then you get them after they're mastered, did you notice much of a difference at all? I did notice the drums sounded a lot better. Okay. Um, the guy, Alex Saltz, um, he's from New York. I got in touch with him, and he was also really good to work with because, like I said, I'd never done that before, mm -hmm. and I had these questions. I was like, I don't know if these are really stupid questions to be asking <laughs> or I don't know. Uh, but he was great. He he actually called me one night and we were just talking on the phone. He's like, yeah, don't worry about it. Like I've been in audio for like 20 years and I still don't, I don't know everything. So yeah, it was great. Okay. Um, so the drums and vocals were certainly the, the biggest difference I heard after Alex had worked on it. Okay. So you're going back. So at this point, so album just came out 10 days ago mm -hmm. at the time of this recording. I don't know how long it's going to take me to get it <laughs> up on the web, but, um, you know, so that came out near the end of 2021, but it sounds like it's kind of been in the works, you know, at least the writing stage, the recording stage, that's been at least, what, five or six years now then? Yeah. Okay. And it, and now that, like, to me, that sounds like a long time <laughs> for, <laughs> for an album. Um, is it like, did you know from day one when you're writing these songs down that you wanted it to become something like this, something bigger than just you know, some audio recordings on your phone? Um, I think I did. I mean, I wrote a lot of songs at the end of 2015. Like, there were just, it was a very, like, creative time. Mm. Um, and every once in a while, I would hit on one and be like, this is cool, I want to do something with it. I just don't know what. Mm -hmm. um, but I did. I did always know that I wanted something something to happen with them and if i would have been if i would have been more prepared i would have had it be more fresh and just like try to hit it as the songs were being written to go record them okay what's but the benefit of that do you think i think it just keeps me from overthink like overthinking and overworking the songs okay. yeah because like the the say uncle record i've heard it so many times because i've worked on it for so long yeah that it's just like, it sounds so calculated to me. And I don't know if that's the feel of the, the album or if that's just me listening to it being like, this is my own stuff. And obviously I know what me being the one who recorded it will be playing. Yeah, I mean, I would say from my perspective, I don't feel that way at all. But that's again, good. I haven't sat with it for six years and, you know, like yeah. been a part of every single step of the process. Um, but I know, you know, you know like back... When we were in high school, you know, a little early out of high school, you had been doing some other things. Mm -hmm. uh, you were in a band called Landing Leslie. You guys had released a couple little EPs on CD and things like that. Never really put it up like, you know, on Spotify, Apple Music, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but like talk about what made this album, this record different than these things you've done in the past and what kind of gave you that nudge to actually like, you know, take this one the whole way. So I guess what like ultimately gave me, there were several things that made me want to turn this into a more concrete project. Um, the amount of time that I had dumped into it, I was like, if this is just another silly little home recording that I print CDs out and give to my friends just to be like, hey, look what I made, then I would be doing the exact same thing I was doing in high school. Mm -hmm. um, but it also like, there was just so much more meaning behind this one, you know, with the with the accident and everything. Mm -hmm. And do you feel comfortable telling the audience about this stuff? Yeah, like, we can talk about. Okay, that. yeah, I think it would be, you know, you know, I know it's tough to talk about, but something that gives a lot of good backstory to, you know, the meaning behind this album and and kind of a lot of the inspiration. Yeah, behind the whole thing. Yeah. So in December of 2015. As you know, um, I was in a car accident where uh, my girlfriend Naomi was killed, and it was earth shattering. <laughs> it was just so traumatic on so many different levels. Um, and that's when I started writing all those songs. And it was really, it was really the songs about Naomi that whenever I wrote one, I was like, this needs to be, this needs to be documented more than a 
give my friend a CD that I made for this. Um, so that's, that's where that came from. Like say uncle was completely inspired by the accident and because of Naomi, because she was awesome. She was the coolest person. So ultimately I just wanted to dedicate something to her. Yeah. You know, where do you find the motivation and like the drive after something, you know, so like you said, earth shattering, devastating, like where do you, where do you dig deep and, and, and harness that emotion into this creativity and, and into like a banger of a record like this? You know what I mean? Like, how did you, how did you get yourself together to be able to do that? So like the early writings of these songs, even though a lot of them are like explicitly about Naomi or just the aftermath of, um, how I saw myself and also presented myself to the world at the time. Like they sound, they sound painful because they are, but writing them was extremely cathartic because it was just, it was a moment that I could not be completely in my head for a while. Um, Like the hours or so that it took me to write and track a song. I just, I was existing somewhere else in my head. I was like, I'm, writing music i'm playing guitar like i've done done since i was like 13 years old it was just it was so nice to not be consumed by the thoughts of what had happened just like Mm -hmm. a couple weeks before right yeah that's powerful man like did you did you feel like it was kind of like almost like a meditative type thing that you would kind of just get out of your own thoughts or your own body and just It felt very meditative. I, I don't like pretend to be somebody who knows a lot about meditation. I've done it a couple times. Um, but the whole idea of like losing yourself by only focusing on your breathing or what you're doing at the exact moment, it, it was similar in that, in that way. Yeah. I'm similar boat, you know, I'm not experienced with it whatsoever, but just other people's accounts where they'll say that it's just almost like an out of body type thing that, you know, you're, you're just so in the zone with something that you don't have room for these other you know thoughts to come through and, you know, emotions and, and positive or negative. It's just, you're just in the zone. Is that like similar to kind of what you were feeling while you were writing these, writing these songs down, putting pen to paper and yeah. Okay. It yeah. was very much like that. And also just to touch on the pen to paper thing, that's, I have loved writing like my mom used to have us all keep a journal just because she's like, it's important. Like it's, Mm -hmm. and it is, I, I really, really like journaling, just getting your thoughts out. Um, I think journaling is really similar to songwriting for me where it's just like, it's a moment to, to be very focused on what you're doing, but also letting your mind kind of wander and you're just like, yeah, just existing for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Man, that's obviously, you know, been, been through a lot um, and and it's certainly provided, I would say, would you say like 100% of the inspiration for this album or has there been other, other you know, things that have, have been added to it, um, you know, since those initial stages um, as far as the emotion aspect, as far as just other things? I would say for, for Say Uncle as a, as a whole album that was like 100% the inspiration for it because I mean, I sing about like snakes, the opener off the, off the album is (laughs) it's about doing drugs like way too much. And that was just another much less healthy way that I found that I could numb myself and not exist for a while. Um, but I had never gotten into stuff like that before the accident. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was the reason that I did get into it. So yeah, even if the, even if the topic isn't always specifically the accident, it is very closely related to it because it was a result of it. Yeah. Everything surrounding it after, after that day. And, and you know, you also released the album on that 
anniversary of the date of the accident. I did. Um, and now did, was that planned from the beginning? I know when we had been talking before, you know, years ago, you had told me how you had this album in the works and it was, you know, oh, maybe a few months, maybe, you know, six months. Uh, yeah. Did you, did you kind of have planned in, in the beginning though, that it was going to be released on that day and maybe not the same year, but. No, that was, um, <clears throat> that was never the intention that just really what it came down to is I was tired of waiting to release the record. I was like intimidated to do it. I was kind of scared. I was like, I've done, I've put all this time in and I don't want this to be like subpar. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was talking to my friend, Matt, who is also a musician. He's like, you just got to do it. Like, stop, stop fussing with it. You clearly care what people think about, but you also don't really. So just give it out to your friends like you've been doing. Mm -hmm. Like, think of it that way. It almost sounds like a lot of this record was, you know, for you, you know, this was like a, a release for you, um, being able to not only record it and, and, you know, get it mastered and all that, but, but to actually, you know, release it to the public and everything was such a, you know, almost feels like maybe a weight off the shoulders. It um, was man. Yeah. <clears throat> um, it certainly was. And yeah. I landed on the, the 13th, uh, the date of the accident, just because it, so this is the sixth year since the accident. And up until it, that's such a sad day. Mm -hmm. Like no matter how good I think I've been doing, like trying to get better throughout the years and stuff, every time the 13th hits, it's just, it's like crushing. It's yeah. such a terrible, terrible time. So I was like, why not, why not release the record that day? Mm -hmm. Instead of just focusing on how sad I feel that this happened instead be like this is something i made because of it and i think this is sick and i hope that you guys think this is sick too yeah yeah i'm, I'm sorry for for all the tough questions i do feel you know this is really important though and, and i know it's a big part of you and, and you know you're very open about it too and one thing i wanted to ask is does you know does it get easier over the years i mean you said you know it's been six years now and every every year on the date that it's just as crushing did you know with time um, do you find that it's, it gets easier at all or it gets, um, I guess you learn how to deal with it better. Like, I don't know if it actually gets better mm -hmm. because like I said, the 13th and the 13th is just a really easy example, but there can be certain days where it's just like, this is too much. Yeah. It just sucks. Um, but you do, I have, and I know that other people have, because I'm clearly not the only person that a bad thing has happened to, but you learn to deal with it and you also take lessons from it. Like you learn, and this is a lesson that I'm learning. It's hard to say that positive things have come out of it because it was such a terrible thing that I, it's like kind of difficult to be like no 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 you can take some lessons from this um uh one being like a different level of empathy for people that have gone through something so terrible mm -hmm. um or learning to keep your mouth shut if somebody's really opening up to you and being like i'm hurting here I'm like spilling my guts to you. You don't always need to be like, oh, well, I understand because try to throw in some kind of like personal connection. Yeah. You don't need to do that mm -hmm. because in my experience, more often than not, that just pisses the person off because yeah. it's like you're, you're taking to, their moment. You're you know, taking you their know. moment. Yeah. Um, so there are, there are things to take from it. And that, I think that ties into with, um, you learn to deal with it. Mm -hmm. The pain doesn't go away, but you learn how to handle it in different ways. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I promise we'll, we'll lighten it up pretty soon. I have another kind of heavy and, and pretty personal question. Like, how did, you know, your outlook on, on your own life and, and life in general, how did that change over these last six years? The last six years have been, have been nuts. Um, the fur the first year after honestly i don't remember that much um i mean i know that i was writing these songs and i surrounded myself with friends who were closely tied to the accident mm -hmm. because they were people that i felt like actually understood what was going on but other than that i i was drunk the entire time mm -hmm. um and that went from a coping mechanism to like an actual addiction that I developed. I was like, even after I was like, I'm not even drinking because I'm sad anymore. I'm drinking because I feel like I need to. Mm -hmm. um, that was probably like year two, year three. Those are all kind of jumbled together. It was just a shit show of me and my three, three roommates. Who okay, where were, are you living at this time? Are you in Pittsburgh or are you at that point? Else? I was still in, um, I was very close to home, okay. close to Mifflin town. I was living out in Coquilamus okay. out by East yep. Junietta. Sure. Um, but we were all really just still feeding off that same very, very negative energy. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I moved to Pittsburgh and that was a, that was a decent step. What sparked that change to, you know, get out of this, you know, it, so it sounds like you recognize that it was a lot of negative energy. Um, is that something you knew at the time or is that hindsight you're seeing that? And did you get out of, out of, you know, your hometown because of it? Or was there something else that drew you to Pittsburgh? Uh, there were two things that took me to Pittsburgh. I couldn't stand being here anymore. Um, it was just, it was too much, too painful. Uh, there was a girl that I was very interested in that lived in Pittsburgh. And I was like, this is my chance. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave. And I lived there for like two years almost. Okay. Um, and that was, that was a growing time. It was, it was different, it, which is what I really needed at the mm -hmm. time was to just not not be so closely connected to the reason that I hated home so much. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I cleaned myself up a little bit in Pittsburgh and then I decided that I was done drinking and that was early. Dude, when was COVID? Was that the start of 2020? Yeah. 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 So I actually, I came home to finish say uncle the day before COVID was a global pandemic. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, well, I guess, I guess I'll stay here. <laughs> I guess I'm staying here. But that was a, that was a really good year for me personally. Like it was, it was terrible yeah. that just as like a globe was so collectively depressed and lonely mm -hmm. and sad. Yeah. I happened to come home at, the ideal time like both my younger brothers were home my parents were here i was not drinking and we had a great time mm. it was so good and i i got back into like writing songs i hadn't done that almost my entire time in pittsburgh um so all that happened um And that brings us like relatively close to present. Mm -hmm. Now you had a little stint in, in New Hampshire, right? I did. Yeah. I was a nanny for my cousins. Okay. Now that was post COVID or that was like, middle, yeah, of COVID. middle of COVID. Um, um, <clears throat> I know you were writing some songs there, mm -hmm. uh, but you were essentially finished up with recording say uncle, right? And it was just kind of in the later steps, the mastering, the, you know, actually figuring out how, how do we release this thing? Yeah, um, but you had already finished all the writing, all the recording. Um, yeah, say, un say uncle was totally finished at that point. Okay. Well, totally finished on 
me physically working on yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Um, when I was in New Hampshire being a nanny, that was when I got a lot of the work done. Actually finishing and releasing the record. Okay. Which again, the time frame, it's it takes so long to do this stuff. Maybe I'm just lazy. I don't know. No, but man. um, I got home early 2021. So yeah, I spent like seven months or so in New Hampshire. And the album at that point was done. It was mastered. It was finished. It was only up to me to release it. And mm-hmm. then it took me till December of this okay. year. Yeah. <laughs> so you kind of hinted at that, you know, you don't, you don't want this to necessarily just be like a, something I'm handing out a CD to a couple of my buddies. Mm-hmm. What are you kind of hoping that happens with this album? And do you see more in the future, you know, f- more albums, more, you know, maybe playing some shows, things like that. What, what kind of, what, what are your goals with it and where do you see it going ideally, you know? I'm just so, going to close this window quick. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, where I see it going... Um, I'm just going to keep doing the same thing that I've been doing, Um, which is writing songs because I love writing songs and playing shows, which has been non-existent because I haven't had a band and then we had a global pandemic, Mm. which we still have, but (laughs) it seems like people are fine playing shows now. Okay. So (laughs) it kind of comes and goes every few months. I feel like it's like, oh, it's okay now. And then. Yeah. You know, another variant or something. And then we got to hopefully like, you know, we'll be done with it soon. But yeah. Um, so as far as like, you know, I, I guess where do you want it to go in the sense like, are you going to keep, I, I guess you said that like, you're going to keep doing the same thing you're doing, but do you, do you put any focus now on things like marketing, advertising, sending it to record labels, sending it to venues, things like that? Like, or do you just you kind of just release it out, out in the world, release it in Spotify, release it to Apple Music, release it all over, and just kind of let it do its thing? So, I mean, that would be the dream, to just be like, here it is, and then it takes off. <laughs> I realize that's not going to happen, but I like I don't know how to have like an online social presence. Like That's yeah. not a strong point of mine. And that's something that Cole and I had struggled with and still do. I mean, we, we obviously don't really advertise or do anything like that other than we just, we throw up a post every time we do a podcast, but, um, that's something we talked about in the beginning, just goals with what we wanted to do with the podcast. And we were like, you know, it's just something fun we do. We don't really care about it becoming anything, you know, it's yeah. just a hobby. Um, so we just kind of decided we weren't going to go that whole route of advertising and trying to find places to send it to and things like that. But I guess like I, as far as like for your own personal thing with this with this record, is it something that you want to focus on that at all? Or I I definitely want to focus on it more than I have been. Um, but it's like where do you start? You know, <laughs> I think I just need to get with my friends that are currently playing music and be like, mm-hmm. let's play together. Yeah, like if you have a show, I will gladly jump on the bill. Yeah, I'm gonna get physical copies of things made like cds and vinyl are on the way oh really that's awesome. yeah yeah so and that's always been i'm trying to treat it the way that i guess the way i'm approaching like the next step of my project and the way that i present it is how i see bands that i admire doing it where they don't take social <laughs> media too seriously it's like solely in the moment stuff like they're playing shows they're going hard Mm -hmm. and at the end of it they're like come talk to us like we have cds and all this stuff that you can come get if you liked it but if not then we don't have a whole lot to talk about really um that's something i I'm just kind of curious how it even works, you know, like, is it, is that still the main way that bands get fans? Is it just like, you know, you, you open for somebody bigger than you that people find out that, you know, they like this guy, they like this music, you know, they start sharing it with friends or do you think social media and things like that is kind of like the primo way of doing it these days? 
Honestly, I have no idea. Yeah. I mean, personally, I don't know that I've ever found a band or anything that I like through social media. It's it's almost always, now I don't even know how you would go about it, but like almost always just something that comes on Shuffle, mm-hmm. on Spotify or Apple or or something that one of my buddies will send me like, hey, check this out. But, you know, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I could be wrong, but I don't see that social media really doesn't seem to be a, a huge way of getting... Um, you know, more fans for a band. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Th- things, if you can like secure some sort of like, I don't know, like I know there was another another guy um, from our hometown uh, who's in a band co- called Hoko. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, obviously, but I just want to like set the stage a little bit yeah. for people. And I had heard one of his songs on ESPN, like Sports Center or something, yeah. playing right before that. That was nuts. And it's like, that's great. You know, that's like, that is like the way I see that you get a ton of fans. It's just like something, 10 second clip plays on ESPN, and then everyone's yeah. like hitting Shazam, hitting Siri, like, what is this song? You yeah, know? He's the guy I should talk to. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was going to say is like, you know, what are the ways of doing this that are, that are you know, actually, you know, going to work and not just be a complete time sink and money sink? Yeah, um, I don't know. Do you, have you ran into any of that yet, or is it kind of just like have I paid for any? Have social... you ran into like have you been looking into it much, like researching wise? Like, what do you think like the best ways of going about it are? I have, but they've been so lame. I don't think that it's like I don't think it's the way to do it. <clears throat> like, um, even figuring out how to get my music on Spotify, I ser- I googled. I'm like, how to get your music on Spotify. Cause I had no idea. Yeah. And then there was like a list that came up and then I found these like independent labels and stuff. So that was helpful. Um, but then like all the related searches or links or whatever, it was like, here are five things you need to do before you release your music. And pretty much all of it was be on social media, yeah. hype people up and then they will love you. I was like, oh, okay, cool. What if the music sucks? What if it does <laughs> suck? Right. And also, like, how do you hype people up yeah. on social media? But, like, it's kind of a joke to me. Mm. Um, it can be cool. It can certainly be cool. Like, it can be a useful tool for some people, I think, that are interested in using it. So maybe I should become more interested in using it. Like, I've found, I found some cool bands, like, um, like Phoebe Bridgers. I'm a huge fan of Phoebe Bridgers. Um, and I found this artist named Christian Lee Hudson because I kept seeing like these posts of them together. And I was like, who is okay. this dude? Yeah. And I looked at his page. I'm like, oh, his music is great. That's awesome. So you just need to meet Phoebe Bridgers and start talking to her on social media. Right. That's the goal. <laughs> or like as a whole with my friends that play music be like, maybe this is a way to hype people up. Yeah. It's not like, you know, and and this is something that's nice about the industry. Um, You know, I've heard podcasters talk about it before and musicians talk about it. It's it's not a competition because if you like, you know, if, if, if somebody likes your buddy's music and then he shares your music, it doesn't mean that they don't like his music anymore. Right. It's just, you know, now there's two, you know, they like two different bands. It's yeah. it's not a competition in the sense that you're not selling a, you know, you're not selling a McDonald's burger and you're trying to outcompete Burger King. It's like, you know, you can, people can enjoy both. Right. Yeah. I don't, I don't think there's enough of that. I'm hoping that, I hope things change. Like I, I wish that the whole competition thing would go away. Cause it just, I think it kind of ruins it. Yeah. But, I don't yeah. know, maybe healthy competition. I'm not yeah, sure. true. Yeah. Um, so then as far as like, you know, it kind of sounds like you want to start doing some shows, start doing, you know, some openers and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, have you been looking into that much? Uh, I know with COVID it's, it's kind of tough, but where are you looking to play? Like I know in the past, you know, we had, you had some small shows around the local area. Um, yeah. I know, you know, based on talking to you previously, that you wanted to branch out a bit more than that. Uh, where where are you looking to have some shows and how do you go about doing that? Um, I think the first place I want to look is State College. Um, I have some friends who play there like pretty regularly. I think there are people to reach out to and be like, 
let's do this. I mean, we both like music. Why not? And I don't see them as we were talking about as like the competitive type. They wouldn't mm -hmm. be like, who's this guy trying to jump in on what we've already done? Yeah. I think they'd be hyped about it. Um, <clears throat> that's a place that I would like to play. I really, really want to get back to Pittsburgh and play some shows. Like they have really cool venues there, mm -hmm. like Mr. Cool Smalls and there, yeah. yeah, Club Cafe, like places like that. And they take local bands. Yeah, and they got some great local bands too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those are those are two places I would I would like to try and get in with. And then as far as you know, doing these shows, what kind of stuff are you going to be doing? Do you have a band that's going to be backing you up and things like that, or are you like what what kind of stuff are you going to be doing? I would like it to be full band stuff. Mm. Um, my brother can play drum like we've all practiced together a couple times with the idea of like let's actually make this happen we have something to roll with so he's been playing drums uh will markley the guy who recorded the record for me mm. is playing second guitar and then our friend michael mertz has been playing bass um but i would really like it i mean the the main focus is the full band because that's what the album is yeah i would like it to get to the point where if I don't have a full band, then I can still go play a show by myself. Because mm -hmm. um, okay. that's how all of the songs were written, were by myself. Like I, I would like to try and somehow blend them together. Yeah. And I think I'm like record number two, I would like to make that more accessible. Like the Say Uncle idea is so full band it would be hard to play any of those songs by myself yeah. really um but i would like to record the second one in a way mm. where it's like do i have a band if not okay i can just go play this show and that would be just as much fun yeah i feel like this might go against everything about you but would you ever do something like tracking tracking like some drums tracking a bass and just playing by yourself i i would probably do that I, I got a looper pedal recently and I've been trying to mess around with that. Okay. Um, but it would be it would be cool to get one that I could put drum tracks that I recorded on and play that yeah. and then try and do something goofy. I yeah. think that would just be like I mean, some people are incredible with looper pedals, hmm. but then other ones are just kinda like, I don't have a band. Yeah. <laughs> Here I am doing my own thing. <laughs> and yeah. I like it. I it's it's just fun. And ideally you would have the band, but just, you know, in the off chance that, you know, it doesn't work or something like that. But just seeing what kind of stuff you considered. Now, as far as music goes, I know this is kind of taking a big turn here, but, um, you know, you've pretty much been playing music your whole life. Mm -hmm. I know we had taken piano lessons from the same piano teacher as a kid. Yeah. Um, the, you know, like, tell me about your story growing up. Tell me about where music you know, kind of directed you throughout life? And, and is this something that you've kind of always had as your, you know, your dream job? Like, this is what you want to do? Um, is it just kind of like a side project, side hobby kind of thing? Like, what what do you want to make out of it? And where did you start here? So, music has always been, like, the coolest thing that I could imagine. Even before I could play an instrument, um, you know, driving in the car with my parents or whatever, they had their music that they liked, which was like very separate from one another. But it was fun because dad's music was always louder. <laughs> yeah. And it would be like, this is so yeah. cool. Um, and then I also like we grew up really religious. So it was kind of um, the pickings of artists that we were like allowed to listen to were a little slim. Um but the first band that really, really got me into music was Switchfoot oh, okay. because their their guitars were loud. They had loud drums. And every time I listened to them, I was just like, this is unreal. I want to do this. This is the coolest thing. Mm -hmm. And then when I was eight, um, my mom had us start taking piano lessons, which was like the furthest thing from <laughs> yeah, what from I thought I was yeah. Yeah. <laughs> going to be doing. But piano turned out to be really fun. Like mm -hmm. I, I loved it. Um, I acted like I didn't because my older brother said he hated it. So I was like, yeah, I hate it too. Yeah. But secretly I was like, piano is sick. Um, and then I started playing guitar when I was like 12 or 13. And that just opened up a whole 
a whole different world of music that I had not known before. Mm. Like, as you know, the lessons we took were much more like classical yeah, kind of stuff. Certainly, yeah. But then I started playing guitar and I'm like, oh, damn, I can play these songs that I love so much. And that was that was incredible. And then I wanted to to do what they were doing, not just playing the music, but making my own songs. So I started doing that when I was like 14 or 15. And I wish I had, I wish I had recordings of those because I don't remember how they went at all. Yeah. I just know that they were awful. Nice. But I was still trying to do it. And I mean, you got to start somewhere. Right? Yeah. I think that that's been the biggest thing with music for me is like, there are no rules. Mm. Obviously, some people are better than others. But what does that matter? Yeah. Like, I, I don't I don't care. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I want somebody to be able to play an instrument. But if they're into it and they're doing it because they love it for the same reasons that I love it, then that's that's fine for me. Yeah. And music currently, um, it, it's no different. It hasn't changed. I'm still just playing guitar in my bedroom to kind of kill time, but also just to try and learn something new. Like what else can I do with this? Mm-hmm. So where along the way did you pick up, you know, the drums? Because I know you're doing everything on these records. Mm-hmm. When did you start singing that kind of stuff too? Um, singing, well, we'll get into singing next. Uh, drums were, Drums were really easy for me. And I think that stems back to piano lessons. I was going to say, I think that piano was like a big thing for that. Because you really, you know, learning piano, you learn the coordination of both hands. You Mm -hmm. learn rhythm very well. It's just, I I agree. Because that's what, I started out with piano and then I went into drums like in fourth or fifth grade or something. And it just came so easily. Yeah. And I think that was all piano, honestly. It, It certainly was. I mean, like you said, you have the right hand going, the left hand going, and then you have the damper pedal on the piano and it made total sense to just put all those together in a drum kit Mm -hmm. um but yeah one of my friends uh taryn stauffer who ended up playing bass in one of my bands um texted me out of nowhere when we were like i think 17 or 18 and he was like i know that you play guitar i'm trying to learn it like let's get together and learn some like Foo Fighters or Nirvana songs. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right, cool. Um, but I had this drum kit sitting around my house. So I was like, I'll show you how to play guitar. Like we'll learn the songs. And it really didn't take much cause he was, he picked it up right away. So he would play the songs on guitar and I would play them on drums because like what drummer doesn't know how to play Nirvana songs. Those are like, I feel like that's every first person who plays drums. Like, yeah, I want to play like Dave Grohl. Yeah, obviously, because he's so, <laughs> he's so cool. Um, so we would just play those songs together, and I, honestly, I don't know if I've really progressed from there as drumming. Like, I can just I can keep time and I can play with people. I don't really know anything flashy or special on the drums. I'm just trying to play like Dave Grohl. <laughs> and some of those drum tracks are pretty. Pretty crazy on uh, some of them are cool, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love the drums, Mm -hmm. I just don't necessarily know how to play them. Yeah, and I feel like drums is one of those that's kind of tough to just sit down and get creative on it. You almost need Mm -hmm. someone else with you that's laying down a few chords or something that you can just mess around with. If you're just playing drums to play drums, it's at least for me personally, it's tough to just like come up with something. Right. If there's not an accompanying like guitar, Uh, piano, whatever. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, So yeah, a lot. I think you touched on something good there. A lot of my drumming abilities have come from me recording guitar tracks in my room and just putting them in my headphones and trying to drum to it yeah so i was just like looping myself over and over (laughs) just to try and come up with a part um but yeah singing uh this last year like 2021 was really the first year i actually learned to enjoy singing Mm -hmm. um 
And that came from spending so much time in New Hampshire. When I actually got to be by myself, they had like a garage that I could go record in after I was done with my nanny and gig. I would just go outside and play guitar and sing along. And I was like, this is actually really cool. And there's nobody around for me to be embarrassed if they hear me singing. And then I realized that I actually kind of like the way that I sound. And up to that point, I did not at all. Like recording vocals on Say Uncle was not fun. It was painful. I wonder what it is about singing that is so much more like, you just feel so much more self-conscious than anything else. Like if I'm messing up on piano or if I'm messing up like a lot on the drums or, you know, I've played a little bit of guitar before too, you know, I don't, if it sounds bad, I don't get nearly as embarrassed as if, you know, my singing is just terrible, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what, I wonder what it is about singing itself. That's just so much more embarrassing. (laughs) I think a big part of it is just not actually knowing what your actual voice sounds like. Yeah, that's true. Because I mean, if you're playing yeah. piano or you're playing guitar, you hear it and then you record it and it sounds exa- exactly the same. Whether you mess up or not, it's still the same in your ears. Yeah. But then you, like the first vocal take I ever had, and then I played it back, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> what (laughs) yeah like that's what i sound like that's that's not good and then i was so like ashamed for so long because i couldn't get used to the way that i sounded but as i like recorded more and more and got more familiar with what i actually sounded like then i realized i can actually i can sing in my own way and it like it works um but that took a lot of like years for me to get comfortable with that yeah no that is a great point because i didn't really think of that before but yeah you you do sound so much different to yourself when you're just speaking like right now even like i'm sure i sound way different to myself than if i would play this back and listen to it oh yeah later um i don't know it might have something to do with like the conduction of you know the sound waves and all that stuff but it's just crazy that you know i don't know like it's just crazy. Like, what did people do before microphones, before recording and stuff? I guess you just never really knew what you, like, truly sound like. They all probably just thought they were badass because yeah. they never heard themselves. True. They're just yeah. sitting there <laughs> singing around a campfire. They're like, this yeah. is great. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's no playback to put you in your place. Yeah. They're like, that was yeah, that's bad. that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. So as far as now, like, nowadays, you know, you've kind of learned to embrace that you you love the way your voice sounds. And, and I do, too. Like, um, I remember... You know, even back in high school, we would do things like the school, like it wasn't really a talent show, but the May Day, it was mm-hmm. called, where we would, we would play like just, a, I don't know, what, what would you call that thing? Like a talent show, I guess, but it wasn't like a... It kind of was a talent show, yeah. but it was also like a like a prom queen kind of thing. Yeah, Like there like was like a that. May Day queen. Yeah. It was weird. Yeah, it was weird. Um, but we'd play things like that. There's like a local music festival we would used to do called mm-hmm. Big Tree um just playing random shows and stuff and i always was a fan of your guys music always liked your voice um but i know that back at that time that you did you know voice you know a little bit of discomfort with it and stuff like that so you know i'm glad to hear that you you kind of have have overcome that and kind of learn to embrace it um and that's something kind of i also want to talk about is like just the music scene here in juniata county and like central pennsylvania no, compared to like something like Pittsburgh or a city, you know, it's you know pretty small. But mm-hmm. it was just crazy to me how much, how many different bands there were, how many different like musicians and artists there were when we would have something like Big Tree or May Day. There uh, were, there yeah. were a lot of us. Um, an odd amount for yeah. the for the area. Like it didn't seem like. Um, anybody else would be playing music. Yeah. I mean, I knew that you played music because you took piano lessons, but I remember when I found out you were in a band, I was like, awesome. (laughs) Like Nick's one of those guys. Like you're you're playing music other than just taking lessons. Mm. You're playing music because it's cool. Mm. And then like putting shows on together was, that was the most fun. Yeah. Like when, when we all made our own shows happen and people came out, that was so, so much fun. Yeah. Yep, we even if we had to do it in you know one of the bandmates' driveways or something, yeah. like we we make it happen. Yeah, 
Yeah, and I remember like, you know, obviously you guys had burned some CDs. We'd like tried to mess around with that too in my high school band. And we were just like really set on making it be a thing. And, and actually, I'm really happy that, um, you know, so I used to play in, obviously, in a band with um, two other guys, uh, uh, Dean and Colin. And they're both actually still playing music. They're both in their own mm-hmm. bands. And, and Colin's talking about getting uh, an album together and releasing that and hopefully in the next couple of years. So it's really cool to see that, you know, people stuck with it. It wasn't just like a little phase through high school. Yeah, that, they're still doing yeah. it. Yeah. And, you know, obviously yourself included, like that you're, you've really taken it to the next level too. You know, you, you've dedicated all this time, six years, you know, to, to something like this. And it's, it's pretty cool to see, especially, you know, when I'm listening to these songs, like it's so much more special knowing, knowing you, knowing like the story behind them. Um, and it, it, you know, it's just, it's just awesome. That's all I can say. About yeah. It. yeah. Um, so, so what do you see like next steps as far as, you know, I know you'd, when you were in New Hampshire, you were sending me some music that was like <laughs> really awesome. <laughs> and, you know, I, I'm excited for it to say the least. Um, do you see yourself getting back in the recording studio anytime soon? Or is it, is the next, you know, year or so dedicated to promoting say uncle doing the shows for that? Um, what, what kind of stuff do you see coming up? So I was, I was thinking about that yesterday. Um, just, I mean, I've never really done new year's resolutions and stuff like that, but we're coming up on new year's and I was thinking, um, I need to come up with a number of shows, like a realistic number of shows to play for 2022. But at the same time, I want to get the next record recorded and finished like i think a year gap between two albums is like a healthy time span yeah. um so yeah i would i would really like to get back in the studio and that would also be nice because that i'm just gonna go to wills again mm-hmm. i assume yeah because it's <laughs> we work not? well yeah. together and he's right there and yeah it's fun so if we're in close proximity working on these songs like why not be like, hey, let's practice and put some shows on, and then as we're learning the songs that we're recording, maybe start putting those in the say uncle set and be like, we're working on stuff. Like, yeah, <laughs> we promise. I think it would also be good to um put a deadline on myself for the next recording. Mm. That was the that was a big thing with releasing say uncle is like other than me telling my friends nobody knew that this was a thing yeah it it was just like five or six of us yeah up until like a couple weeks before you released a single and you released another one and stuff like that but up until that it seemed like it was almost completely in the dark other than you know people that you were just sharing it to on the side um and i think that's a good point you know you don't want to wait too long because when you had the last album recorded and and done on your end it still took what a, another year or so until yeah. it was fully ready to be released yeah um so if you get this you know a big following and things like that and they're wanting new music and you know it, it's crazy to me that some artists i know they have like an army at their back helping them get these things done but it's, it's crazy to me that some people re- can release multiple albums in a year or like right you know <laughs> each year they come out with a new album or something it's like how do you do that yeah I'm, I'm envious that people can yeah um it's nuts and all the while they're touring you know around the globe and that would be so sick like that is the dream to be on tour and be like known enough that you can stop in at different studios in different cities as you're on the way yeah that would be so much fun you got to get a band van man i know yeah <laughs> <laughs> i know the one song i don't it wasn't I don't think it was on the album. It was one that you sent me before where you're like, I'm saving up to buy a van. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I am. You still it's, saving up? Okay. Good. It's in the back yeah. burner. Nice. Yeah. What are you looking for? <laughs> I have no idea. Something that runs. <laughs> yeah. We ran into that problem in high school. We had a band van that didn't run. So yeah. Yeah. It's not a, not a very useful whenever it doesn't run. But. Yeah. It's no good to have a van that doesn't run, but it's also not that great to have a band a van if you don't have a band yeah so you gotta tie that down first i think 
So I wanted to say this towards the end because I know, you know, um, don't want to bore people too much with, with technical things, but for all the like tech junkies out there, all the other musicians and stuff, t tell me about like what kind of equipment you're using, what guitars, like, you know, what do you love to use, what kind of pedals, that kind of stuff. I know um, a lot of people are interested in that, um, that are fellow, you know, musicians or, or big fans. So. Yeah, right now, um, I'm playing, uh, a, a, it's called a, a Pentone Black Cat. Um, a guy that I know, Shannon Huss, he has a business called HEL Guitars. He, he does like fantastic work on just like setting your guitar up, you know, like cleaning the frets and getting all like the gross like finger gunk yeah. out of the frets and stuff. Um, he does all that, but he also builds guitars. Mm. And a couple of years ago, he did this run of guitars called Pentones and uh, the Black Cat was one of the models. Um, so I took a couple guitars to him to get worked on and I saw it hanging on the wall I was like, damn, that's a really cool guitar. What is that? He's like, I made it. I was like, <laughs> yes. okay, how much do you want? And I bought it right there. Yeah. Uh, so I've been playing that. Um, so how many did he make? Do you know? He said he only made like 20. Wow. So it feels pretty cool to yeah, have like awesome. one of 20 yeah. original guitars made. Yeah. Um, that's what I've been playing a lot of. On Say Uncle, uh, I played through... My amp that I used was my Vox AC30, um, my Telecaster Deluxe, and then pretty much whatever pedals we had laying around. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of chorus on that. It's such a Nirvana rip. <laughs> I was like, man, distorted guitars sound really cool with the chorus. And Will's like, yeah, no shit. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The biggest band of all time did that yeah. over and over and over. Uh, so there's a lot of chorus. Uh, Will had like, he actually did really good with recording the guitar, the guitar totally dry. And then he would go in and do like the, the presets and stuff on his, on his software which okay. at first i was like really opposed to because it felt like it was like cheating or something mm -hmm. but it's not it's just an effect you're putting on your guitar yeah. the same thing as if you're using a pedal yeah you're still playing it you're still, yeah. yeah so that took a little bit to get used to but a lot of the effects on say uncle were like post-production stuff that will and i would sit in the room and like blast our ears with the songs over and over mm -hmm just looking at different things we could put on it. Um, but yeah, uh, that's, yeah. that's pretty much that's it. Yeah. <laughs> are you looking to get anything else? Like, or are you pretty set on your gear now? Every time I think I'm set on it, then I try something new and I'm like, Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Like, like Dean, the guy that used to play in your band, mm -hmm. he lent me the, his orange amp last night no two nights ago yeah yeah um and that thing's that's been very cool mm -hmm. and instantly i'm like i want to buy that but i'm like i already have so much gear sitting in my room do i really need another amp <laughs> i probably do <laughs> yeah you do. <laughs> you do but yeah there's always something out there that catches my eye and mm -hmm. i try to put off from buying for a while but ultimately i end up just buying it like my bedroom is a wreck <laughs> it's just stacks and stacks of music stuff that i've just acquired over the years because i think it's the coolest thing yeah but and i heard you're in the market for a pa so i am <laughs> i think i might be <laughs> yeah um and then as far as like i know you just released it so i don't know how much you know you've gotten to play with it yet but as far as like apple music um spotify and um, you release it on some other sites. I know you use Bandcamp a lot. Mm -hmm. Is there one or the other that you prefer, one that you think, you know, like you'd, you want listeners to go through? Is there anything like that? Or So personally, I've always used Apple Music just because my good friend Colby also uses Apple Music and we share songs together all the time. Mm -hmm. And Apple Music is so easy because you it goes like straight through the message yeah. and then it, it opens the song right up. Yeah. Um I think 
from what I've heard from other people, it's like easier to find on Spotify, which is also something I'm trying to figure out. Okay. Like, how do you become more? I mean, obviously, more plays gets it more known. Yeah. Um. But like my artist profile and my fan profile are one and the same on okay. Spotify. Yeah, I found that when I was looking at it on Spotify, when I would type in Seth White, so it would come up with your fan profile before the other one. Yeah. And so then I'd type in Say Uncle and then it would come up. Yeah, that's how it's been. Like, yeah. you have to search the album instead of my name. So you got I, too many followers on your fan profile. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I need to figure out <laughs> how to bump up You're too like popular. my presence on Spotify. I'm yeah. not sure. Okay. I think maybe I'm just going to start making like playlists or something like okay. as a as yeah. a fan and be like, yeah. this is music that I like. And if you like my taste in music, that's sick and you should follow me. Yeah. Okay. That's really the only, mm-hmm. the only thing I've come up with. Yeah. And then as far as Bandcamp, you've been using that for quite some time. Is that just because of ease of access with Bandcamp or? Bandcamp is so easy and they're also, they're so sick. Like they let you. It's like social media for musicians. Okay. Like they let you create your own profile, like the color scheme, the pictures you use, everything. Um, and they're just so DIY. That's why I started using them because I didn't know how to get my music on Spotify or Apple Music. So why not use Bandcamp? Yeah. Um, but surprisingly most people don't go to Bandcamp to listen to music. <laughs> that is surprising. <laughs> it, and whatever happened to SoundCloud? I feel like SoundCloud was where a lot of people went for I don't releasing know. demos or releasing things that they didn't really put out fully. Yeah, I think... Just kind of fizzled out. I think back in the day, like, was it 17 or 18, we had stuff on SoundCloud. Mm. I'm not even sure. I just remember that, like, our profile picture was upside down and we couldn't nice. figure out how to fix it. Yeah. So I was like, screw it. And I deleted the whole account. Oh, okay. You should have left it. Man. <laughs> <You should've. laughs> yeah. Um, anything else you want to throw out there before we wrap it up? Like any, you know, anything we didn't cover you'd like to talk about or even just, you know, plug in um, social media, anything like that. Um, uh, I should have been more prepared with like what my social media is even called. Yeah. I think it's Seth White. I know on Instagram it's my name is Robes Pierre. Nice. I might have to change. And it's that. all. It's not that your name is Robes Pierre. It's my name. My is name Ro- like is all Robes Pierre. Yeah. <laughs> I might have to make that more accessible. You might have to make that a little bit more accessible. I don't think people are gonna find that. No. Nah. So yeah. I'll probably work on that. Okay. I think the uh, the only plug I have to make is if we heard stomping around in this recording it's because my niece is home and she's super super loud <laughs> <laughs> is this one is it is this your niece that you were um nannying in new hampshire or no those were those were cousins. cousins okay gotcha now this is yeah straight this blood. is a real deal okay well shout out to her shout out to yeah. leah for being loud yeah <laughs> Hey man, it's been a pleasure and you know, best of luck with, with going forward as far as shows and, and this album, you know, I, I would, you know, someone completely unbiased, I would say everyone check this album out. It is a complete banger and I've shown it to all my friends so far and everyone loves it. So, um, check it out. There's a little bit of everything on it. There's, you know, harder songs, there's soft songs, there's some tear jerkers, you know, check it out. Uh, support my man, Seth. And, uh, and thanks for tuning in once again to Insights of All Trades. Um, we did a little bit of reboot first time in a couple of years here. We pulled one off and, you know, wouldn't have rather been with someone else. So yeah. um, thanks for coming on, Seth. Thank you. Thanks for listening, everybody. You can find us on Facebook at Insights of All Trades. Find us on Instagram at Insights of All Trades. Twitter is IOAT Podcast. And send us your insights via email at insightsofalltrades at gmail.com. You can also DM us if you have some insights and we'll include you at the beginning of the podcast. Thanks again. See you soon.